Welcome back to the Hamlet, ladies and gentlemen. For where we must prepare for our next journey. Stand of Stone, Dolan, Twangafar, Good and Great Guy all stand ready. But not before another explanation from Badger. As you can see here, we have a variety of numbers, all very pretty and shiny. Busts, portraits, deeds, and crests. These are used to upgrade the various buildings accessible to us. And for now, we will be using the stagecoach as an example. As you can see by this plus symbol, we're given a variety of options. The stagecoach network increases the number of recruits available for hire. The change will take effect after you return from your next quest. This costs us three, uh, three deeds and four crests. And to do this, it gives us more heroes available when we return from our dungeon. This number up the top here shows us the amount of people we can currently have in our roster, which is increased by the hero barracks. Does not need to be increased just yet. And to be fair, we only need three. More arrive foolishly seeking fortune and glory in this domain of the damned. We can't upgrade it any further, but that can be rectified by using the new function that recently came. We can trade heirlooms normally at a loss to try and obtain more of whatever, you know, what ails us. We could try to gain ourselves some more deeds to be able to upgrade to four heroes instead. But to be fair, I see no purpose. I mean, it would be beneficial, but deeds are very crucial to upgrading our weaponry and our armor, which can be very crucial in the long run of the game, so I have no interest in doing that just yet. We'll see what the next dungeon's hall has for us. So, without further ado, we will continue Monica onward. Of madness and morbidity. Your work begins. We only have the ruins open to us thus far, and we have one objective, to explore 90% of the rooms. We are granted a move stone, some crests, and some money, if we complete this task. And so, we assign them to their respective slots, hoping for the best. The usual suspects they fall under. The cost of preparedness, measured now in gold, later in blood. So, we have to take food with us. As I mentioned before, as we travel through dungeons, we will be made to eat. The party will get hungry. Normally, this is one piece of food per party member. This is, it will be increased should Gut and Greg I be above 50 stress, so they will have to eat more. This is why I'm stocking up more in the eventuality that this takes place. Normally on short missions, you will only need to eat twice, but it's also good to have some backup food in case you need a quick heal. Bleeding is very common in this dungeon, so we will take our, our hand fill and a couple of skeleton keys. No torches. I'd say in this scenario, this is enough. Holy water and anti-venom provided by our cleric and plague doctor alike will help us through this dungeon. And without further ado, we try to spend as little as possible as not to eat into our remaining battle chest. So, let us move onward into the ruins of our old manor. As we step into the foreboding halls, our heroes look around. Skeletons littering the place, weaponry in the background, and candles lit, but by whom? What kind of putrid people could be living in these conditions? But without further ado, they venture onwards into the darker halls. wonders can be found in the most tenebrous corners of this place. And so we progress. Our party, wary, stress overcomes them, wondering what could happen next. Reaching out for a burn, unburned torch, we find a gem sitting in the slot. Tucking into our pockets, we continue onwards, not knowing what to expect. We're ambushed by two skeletons, surprising and shuffling our formation. Twangafar turns, shocked at this coming events. 
they let out emboldening vapors seeping into the nostrils of Twa of Dolan to bring him further power. But I lied. Stan inhales them instead. He ducks right in there and takes a good whiff, selfishly taking the buff for himself. Raising up their mace, they call upon judgment to the skeletons, rattling their bones. While the blade has been known to make ones bleed, the skeletons have not been known for such things. Such effects of mortality are long lost to them. However, it doesn't really matter to them. With a swift strike of a mace, it pl plows off of Stan's armor as he raises a holy decree, striking them both down. Seeking into this unlocked strong box, we find a shovel, a key, some bus, and a little pocket change. Not the worst, not the best. But perhaps the real treasure lurks within. And onward, we find that there is combat affray, a curio, and some treasure. We progress onwards and find a mountain of rubble. Stone seems bent on preventing passage. We take to our shovels and knock it down. Should we not have our shovels, this would have been, uh, given us stress, damage, and wasted time. It would have made our soldiers hungry and desperate. Not surprised by this oncoming event due to our scouting, we're ready. But we must watch out for the acolyte that stands in the back with their undead legion. For they do not seek to attack the flesh, but the mind. However, we're not known for such useless psychological warfare. And so, we greet them with a hefty play grenade. The toxicity eats at their skin. They raise their staff, drawing darkness into our minds. Twangafar shivers. Their, dear, their deepest fears crawl into their mind. Raising his pistol, Dolan takes offense to such a notion, driving a bullet into her chest. With only four health left, there's no need to strike at her anymore. The remaining poison will see to her end. So we call upon the power of the gods to strike upon the unholy. And with that, a holy decree to finish one. Give them no quarter. The skeleton slashes upon Twangafar, distracted by their darker thoughts, brought back to the front of their mind. The blood loss from their wound brings them back to reality. They raise their dagger, hoping to defy their mortality in a single strike, but fail to bring them down. But that's fine. Bullets have always succeeded where blades have failed. The onslaught. Destroy them all. And with that, they collapse. Our party, not that much worse for wear, but we should finish quickly before desperation eats at our mind. Nothing awaits us in the room ahead, or the room we have just entered, I should mention. But we know there is danger, for where there is treasure, there is always something guarding it, without fail. The kleptomania of Stan takes hold, and he robs us of a key and food. Paid for in blood. The rest of the party side-eye each other, wary of Stan's unruly habits. They whisper, murmur, questioning his sanity. But Stan is otherwise preoccupied with his new finds. It wouldn't really hurt the party to take such little objects, would it? The other, the rest of the party thinks otherwise. 
combat awaits. We raise our blades, seeking to destroy the bird, the acolyte of the back, before they draw us any more undo wounds of the mind. Throw toxicity grenades straight at them as the noxious gas fills their nostrils. We draw our pistol and seek to finish them quickly. However, they cling with the remainder of their health, drawing insanity to Gut and Gregai. Dolan is struck with claws, blood spurting from his chest, but they are relatively light. He may yet, he may yet live to see another day. Seeking to twang Afar's wounds, we heal them swiftly. Not before being interrupted by a surly blade. Stan is knocked back, but he remains steadfast. He seeks to drive down the skeleton before it can act once more. Truth prevails, he screams triumphantly. He quickly tends to his wounds, biting off the end with his teeth. Bring himself back to battle with a swift blade to the chest of the brawler. You reap what you sow, brawler. This is how a life is taken. Gooden seeks to tend to the wounds as another blade comes from the shadows, taking yet another life. Golden baubles fill our coffers. And among the heirloom chest, we slot a key and turn. A satisfying click as heirlooms flood our inventory. Beautiful. And so we progress. But we do not know the path that is whence to come. So we return. Seeking to return to the path we have already travelled, to take another path that we already well and truly understand. The party chews on weary rations. It does naught to ease our minds. I mean, who would be satisfied with such meagre portions in such horrific places? We open the sack to find more baubles and holy water. Push open the door. Twin skeletons and an arbalist in the back. The crossbow lines its sights for the back of the party, for where our more frailer members await. Knowing this, Twangafar retaliates with more noxious acid. Swift pistols drawn from our belt, firing into his skull. It chips from his but it trips his skull, but fails to finish him. But where bullets have failed, may the gods not. You shall suffer as I have. More blades upon stand of stone, but he st remains steadfast once more, brandishing his claymore. For the purpose he was destined for, to strike down the unholy! But Dolan pays the price for his inefficiency. In this event, Twangafar seeks to finish what Stan could not, sending them back to whence they came. Drawing his pistol once more. He seeks to shoot at the skeleton, but thinks twice, and brings out his blade for another strike. For it would surely do more, as the bullet was likely to pass through his ribcage. Seeking to finish the battle quickly, we draw upon the power of the gods, and yet fail to end it in any swift fashion, and dearly pay a price. Stan falls to his knees, the blood gushing from his wounds, but he looks up to the sky as if for a message. But his work is not yet done. Dolan helps him to his feet as he wields his weapon for the purpose of justice! 
as victories mount, so too will resistance. Sapphire, Honyx, portraits and coins. Was it really worth it? Normally, we would splash holy water upon this statue. And in this case, I believe we will. For divine benefits, healing our wounds, and relaxing our stress. While it would have been better to give a wound heal to Stan of Stone, he stands much more likelihood of remaining than Twangafar would. His plate armor would protect him. With a quick scout, we notice a trap up ahead. We check our party for who would be most efficient. Dolan is with the 90% efficiency. He disarms the trap. The satisfying clunk of foiling their plans fills them with a sense of relief as we continue onward. Nothing. Nothing here at all. Stan snacks on some food to try and calm his nerves as we progress on through the dark halls. And find ourselves the first more test. trophies. Now it must be carried home. These gems and baubles, they'll look good in our coffers later. Our party stops, taking a deep breath before they progress, for every shadow of this place seems to hold more enemies. The quest is complete, but the party has found themselves in an advantageous position. They have done well for their first foray, and are unsatisfied with the meagre things they have found. One of the party members, Dolan, scouts ahead and finds treasure and enemies up ahead. But has this ever stopped us before? No, it hasn't. Chewing on the remaining food. We seek to claim what is rightfully ours. They rush to seek us dead, but we were prepared for them. Towing a grenade, we chuck it into the back of their party, seeking to erode the courtier and the arbalist. An arrow flies past and strikes Twangafar right beneath the heart, drawing them to a shock. Attempting goblet strikes Stan, his fears corrupting his mind. We draw a quick pistol to try and end the lives of those that would do us wrong. However, the Arbalist was swifter than us and dodges the bullets and is returned with a mighty blade to his chest. We draw our blade and stun the defender to try and mitigate any oncoming damage and fail. Punishing blades return to us. We strike to keep our sanity well in tow. Our party, stuttering breaths escape us. The darkness is enclosing in. Our greed is costing us our health. How will we survive such brutal onslaughts? With iron and bullets, we will cling to life with what we have left. We strike and strike, seeking to go home yet another day. With lightning, blade, pistols and daggers. The slow death. They fall one by one. Even as the shields and blades come to us. Stunning Stan, he falls to his knees, dropping his blade, but quickly stands up again. Dolan takes the foray, protecting his partner with his life. We return with our own blades, cast in holy fire, seeking to finish what others could not do. To put you to rest forever by the power of the gods. 
and we are well rewarded for our efforts. We use our superfluous items to free our slots. And another faithful clunk brings us more gems and baubles. We return home. A successful mission. The journey home filled with smiles. As we slide the coin from one hand to the next. It's the fortune we have sought has come to us. 9,790 gold pieces to ensure that our campaign is fruitious. Stan of Stone becomes a beast hater. Extra damage and minor stress for his almost hateful need to kill animals. And Gooden Grey Guy has become a known cheat. However, develop some sense of the Eldritch, for whatever reason. This will be beneficial in our future. All the decadent horrors I have seen pale in comparison to that final crowning thing. I could not look, nor could I look away. The silhouettes of our heroes look upon the Hamlet, triumphant. They stand bolder men and women than they did before. Experience fuels them. Their coffers heavy. This is opportunity that they have sought. We will return to the Hamlet next episode, and I will explain the needs of the Abbey, the Tavern, and other such trinkets. See you next time, everybody. It's been good.